that that's the big game for them. They, 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 they're probably going to rest a few more players. We're going to, as you say, they've, they've, they've had the narrow squeak against Castleford, um, and they're going to want to try and kind of consolidate that 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 second spot. Um, you you because you, if you you win this, you know you, you've kind of opened up a gap on at least one of the Warrington or um, Cass. So uh, I will go twenty six fourteen for Wigan on this one. So both very similar on that game after going completely yeah. different on all of the others in the Super League Super <laughs> yeah. Let's see yeah. how we fare in the qualifiers round two. It starts on Saturday, 3.15pm kickoff for the Sky Saturday afternoon fixture of Salford versus Widnes. Um I'm going to let you go first on this one. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't see... Past, past Salford, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a comfortable Salford win. Um, they're, they're going to be buoyed up after uh, beating Rovers in in the first round. Um, they knock Widness off here. That's that's the second Super League side on the trot that they've 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 they've, they've knocked over, um, and they kind of catch for ne- for next year. Um, Widness, I, I I don't know how they're going to lift themselves. I mean, kind of, I think. The, the, the witness fan reviews in 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 the uh, in the roundup earlier probably said said it a lot more clearly than than, than I can. Um, I, I don't I, I can't I can't see them getting more than a couple of wins in this. Uh, it's going to be Salford thirty, witness ten. I've gone pretty much exactly the same to be honest. For me, Salford are are good at home are going to be playing with a little bit less pressure on them after last week's result. They've beaten a Super League side already. If you if you beat a Super League side, then you take care of business against the lower-ranked sides and, and you you know that at worst you're going to have a home million-pound game. I think Salford, are, so I think that pressure's off. I think they've got a couple of players who are playing really nicely. Some of them um, maybe, you know, haven't played as nicely in the past at home, but are playing nicely on the field. And Jackson Hastings is having a big difference at Nile Levels back in as well. And then Lussick gives them a, a little bit more impetus, it sounds like, from the, the, the match from last week at around dummy half two. So they've got a really impressive attacking creative spine if, if all those players can stay fit. So so that's why I'm going with them. Actually, Salford by a 20-point margin as well, so why not say 30-10? <laughs> exactly the same <laughs> as you. A bit boring there. Okay. Yeah. Saturday also sees a 7pm kickoff. I think that... I don't know if that's France, France time or UK time, to be honest, but Saturday evening kickoff. Toulouse hosting Halifax. So this is the all-championship upstarts game this weekend. Um, I... I I think there's a chance for it being high scoring. I, I just think Toulouse will win this one at home. They'll probably... Put, I think they'll put on a bit of a show, uh, to be honest. Halifax... I don't know if Halifax won't be more focused on their home games and and causing an upset, because that'll be what gets them the press and gets them the the real credentials out of this out of this period. I think this might be the game that they go in with the least intensity, potentially because it probably means the least to them. I don't think they'll be expecting to to go to challenge for that top part. I think they've already achieved their goal. This is just about enjoying things. I think this is the game they're going to play with the least intensity in, so I think Toulouse will win. I've got Toulouse winning by 22 points. Let's say 40-20. Yeah, again, very very similar. I think I think Toulouse will will have targeted this one as a as a kind of a must win for them. Um, in front of the home fans, kind of, they've, they've potentially played the, or arguably played the hardest game, um, lead, leads away, and, and now we're kind of yeah, let's let, let's get let's get on track um, against the, the weakest side in the in the in this part of the competition. I think again, not as high scoring as yourself, but to lose to win 28-12. Fair enough. Okay, uh, Saturday 7.30pm, we've got a Sky game coming over from Canada. We've got Toronto versus Hull KR. Uh, seeing, us, seeing us, it's your rivals over there enjoying this one on their on their tour. Um, do you want to give us the your prediction first on who's going to win this one and how? Um, yeah, I, again, I, I, I've, I've, I've kicked this one backwards and forwards. Yeah. Um, I've, I've kind of, I, I just think... Toronto uh, at home 
I think Rovers, it's, it's a long way to go. I mean, I don't, I don't know what their, what the travel plans are in terms of are they, are they kind of just going over and getting the game before the kind of um, jet lag hits them or, or, or what. But I, I just think Toronto will have, will have, will have just enough to, to, to get to get them over the, over the line because I think they'll see this one as they open up a four point gap on 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 Rovers because with, with Toronto winning the first and Rovers losing the first, they open up a four point gap and and and, and that that starts looking big. Um, so I, I've, I've got Toronto to win 24-20. Yeah, I, I've gone back and forth too on this one. I mean, it's been pulled up that Hull KR will have all their players available that they can pick. They've, everyone's got their visas, including, you know, the rectums and the bubblers and, and all all else aside. <laughs> um, so so that that's happy days for the Robins there. Toronto are going to be missing Liam Kay. He, he picked up an injury. They there's still a lot of uncertainty around this Mason Caton Brown situation. Um, that that's going to be an intriguing one to follow because they could really do with him in this game if they've if they have sorted out a way of paying this transfer fee and and got that over the line. That that's gone a bit weird. That situation uh, we will see there. But I I fancy Toronto at home. I, I fancy. I think this is a game that they really need to show us that they can win. Uh, I think it might be a close one. I think they need to show us they've got that mentality and they've got some sort of discipline in them at all because we haven't seen it when they played against Super League sides yet, either this year or last year. So this might be the chance for them to show something against a better opposition that they're not all just off their heads and ready for a fight when they're up against it. I I think their their pack, their front row, is probably going to gonna lead them to victory here. And then I'm I'm going to go Gareth O'Brien breaking Hull KR hearts again. I'm going to go Toronto two point victory with a, a late penalty in a 20 points to 18 victory for the Wolfpack in this one. Um, okay, final game of the qualifiers this week. Final game we're going to cover in depth is Sunday 3 p.m. London Broncos versus the Leeds Rhinos. This one, uh, two sides who won on their opening weekend, so um, so a, a good chance two sides to really stake their mark stake their mark on this uh, tournament um, I I just think Leeds I think it might be similar-ish to, to last week's game for Leeds I think they'll come the 60th minute or so they'll probably just about have enough when that forward interchange rolls again rolls around again the second time and they bring Singleton and Cuthbertson back onto the field they'll probably just pull away at that stage I think they've got just enough quality in class to do that against a, a a really spirited London side. I've got Leeds winning by 16 points in the end. I'm going to go Leeds 40, London 24. I think they're another team that could have a few big score lines, kind of Toulouse-esque when it comes to playing against the Super League sides. What do you think? Yeah, sim- similar. I think I think London will will, will keep it tight for possibly the first half but then I think just Leeds kind of class and probably more experience and, and fitness will, 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 will take will take them away um, I think Lond- Lond- I think London's aim for this really would be to keep the keep the, the score down um, obviously the, 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 the like to win and they'll go for a win but I think the big thing for them will be because like, we'll keep it keeping the, the points difference so I think that'll be a massive difference in this in this competition I think um, but I, I just think Leeds have too much for them, and, and I think they're going to—they're probably going to run away with this one. I've got Leeds winning forty points to twelve. Fair enough. Okay, big win for for Leeds there. Okay, Championship Shield game of the week. As we promised last week, we're going to focus on the relegation battle. Um, so we picked out Swinton versus Sheffield. It, it is seventh versus sixth in this one. Um, I'm going to go with my dual reg partners and and pick them to bounce back from what was a terrible terrible second half for him last week I'm going to back Josh Woods and Joe Brown and the rest and say Swinton will beat Sheffield who are in a bit of a slump at the moment just like their dual reg partners St Helens a um, little bit of a slump for Sheffield after some turnaround so I'm going Swinton do you, do you have a, a particular way you want to go in this one? No, I, I'm I'm going to go with Sheff, Sheffield on this one. I just, I just think looking at, at, at past form and reading kind of kind of match reviews and stuff, I just don't think Swinton have got have got got it in them, especially after the game at the weekend. 
Um, I think I think they'll, they'll be, be kind of focused on uh, trying to avoid avoid the bottom spot and kind of uh, just concentrating on the playoffs. So I've got, I'm going to I'm going to have Sheffield to win this one. Okay, well into League One, the game of the week there is focusing very much on that promotion push to be the teams who who might replace Swinton or Sheffield uh, in in the championship next year. It's Whitehaven versus Doncaster that we've picked out. I'm going to let you go first on this one, Langers. Um, yeah, I think Don, Doncaster have, uh, have, have probably underachieved this year. I think a lot more was expected of them. Um, obviously, you got uh, FC legend Rich Horn at the, at the helm there, and uh, more than a more than a, a smattering of uh, FC youngsters kind of in in that side, both current and ex squad members. Um, looking looking at the, at, the, at the results and and the team that they're gonna they're gonna have out, or potential team they're gonna have out. Um, I, I can't see see past Doncaster. I think Doncaster are gonna gonna take this one and, and kind of uh, cement their place in the in that uh, playoff zone. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Whitehaven probably need it a little bit more, but I don't know how great a squad they've got to be able to to pull that off. Whereas Doncaster are kind of pulling on a little bit stronger resources at the moment. I feel, and Doncaster have really been in great form over the last month. Um, they'd fallen away in the middle of the season. This is a chance for them to solidify the top five placings like you say so so I, I'm going Doncaster too okay um, just to wrap that up with the NRL Brit picks for round 23 down under uh, Broncos versus Rabbitohs that's Thursday 10.50am kickoff that is on Sky so you can watch that if you're, if you're not at work at that time or get that on your planner um, to see how the Burgess boys get on in that battle for the top spot there in the minor premiership and actually that is big implications on the bottom end of the eight as well with the Broncos being involved and the next game will um, Brit pick wise is West Tigers hosting the St George Illawarra Dragons that's Saturday at 8.30am that's also on Sky so this really could play a huge role in both the top top spot all the way down through to who gets that extra sort of get out of jail free game in the top four and who might get into the playoffs so really interesting stuff there and then the Raiders play the Roosters on Sunday at 7 10 a.m that is not on Sky so you'll need your watch NRL apps for that if you want to see how um, Josh Hodgson and Elliot Whitehead get on against the current top side in the NRL okay that is next week looked forward to in in great depth and I'm sure all of our predictions will be spot on even though that wouldn't make any sense because we went differently (laughs) several times but we will see how that comes out in the wash next week in the meantime now all that's left for us to do is wrap up the show Right, it's wrap-up time then for episode 194 of the Super League pod. Those keen listeners who who are loyal to the cause every every step of the way might have noticed that during the week we had a couple of SLP shorts come up. One was the regular season stat attack. I encourage everyone to get onto that because there is a few interesting nuggets that I pulled out from this year's regular season stats that I think a few people will be surprised and interested by. And that actually made up the 200th ever recording that an SLP production has has put on. Not the 200th episode of SLP because these shorts are kind of a little bit different to the, to what we do in the main show. But um, but there you go. So we're we're fast lit, fast moving towards episode 200 as well of the Super League pod. So that's all very exciting. Um, what else is? I don't know if it's exciting actually. It's worrying me a little bit. Langers, you've got a quiz for me. You're going to test out my knowledge this week, so um, it's probably a good thing because I probably would have forgot to do one like I have done the last few weeks. <laughs> so, so that's really helpful. But anyway, um, yeah, quiz me. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I think as I mentioned at the start, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a just a, a slight twist on the uh, Who Am I that we've kind of uh, had on quite a few of the other. Uh, episodes and stuff so uh, I think I told you I had five questions I've actually actually miscounted I've got six okay. but um, yeah, hopefully it's not, not, not too bad so the, what, I, what I've done is I've picked some um, Wigan players from the last uh, well last 18 years okay. so all, all in your ballpark that, that's I'll give you the time that I've had a season ticket yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so what I'll do, uh, I've got um, I've got an, an an anagram of the name. Then if you need another clue, I can give you a debut year. Then another clue, 
games and tries. Then another clue, if you really need it, position. Okay. But I'm 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 I'm, I'm thinking you you will you will pull the pull most of these out with. Uh, with uh, without well a little bit of thought but, uh, should it's be been okay. a while since we've rolled anagrams out <coughs> on the show it's uh yeah it's not-